So I'm very sure uh, for, for you to work with, for the purpose of this class, we are going to be using an application, an open source application called one. Okay? Or ZAMP. I think ZAMP should be double X or something like that. Yeah. Uh, double P. Double P. Yeah. yeah. ZAMP. Right? This is cross platform, both Windows and Mac. This is strictly Windows. That's why we say Windows, Apache, Nightwear, X. This is cross platform. Can you see X? Cross. Do you understand? Cross platform. Okay? Irrespective of operating system. Cross platform. Apache will also be there. Apache server is the same. Nightwear is the same. And K2 is the same. Okay? MySQL code runs the same in all platforms. PHP runs the same in all platforms. Just the operating system that are different. Okay? So we are going to be working with this. So if you have installed it, uh, for the first time to start running your application, let me exit this. You need to go to your desktop, then locate it. If you actually and uh, instruct it to save it on desktop, reinstallation, maybe just the shortcut, you know that stuff, when you are installing, you have it there. But if you don't specify that, you can go to your program file and look for the WAMP or ZAMP, as the case may be. Then you start it. So anytime you need to start it before you start working. Then if you have Skype, hello, this is one of the errors. If you have Skype on your system, anytime you want to run SQL, your ZAMP or WAMP, Make sure you off your Skype because both of them are using the same ports on the service, and your Skype is much more powerful and heavy than this. So the sound will override, override it. And look at this. Let me log this out again. You find out that when I on this now, you first of all have white and yellow. White and yellow is limited. White and red, there is no service, it's offline. Pure white is online. Do you understand? Look at this. I'm putting it offline now. It's a service. That is a package service that is controlling it. Okay? So when you have something like this, can you see this? Black in the middle, white all around. If you want your browser to tomorrow, it will not display because the service is off. When you now have red in the middle, sorry, yellow. Maybe it's limited service, it's not working perfectly. But when you now have something like this put online, you have all can you see limited service, limited service, all white. That is full service. Oh, way back during the, the time that I was then in SPS, I was then in my school. It was to Mr. Martin Finis Kedja. Alright, there's something there that we call administration tools. This is where I used to configure database. Let's place about then. If you want to work on local host, instead of ZAMP, if you are using SPS, you are working what we, using what we call inet of. Maybe some of you have it. You save it inside inet of. Let me see if it's here. That is uh, from IIS, Internet Service Manager. Inet, yes. Instead of saving it to the WW root folder. This is where you'll be saving it to. Okay, when it's come to that. But well, that's not our class. Then look at this service here. Why I'm coming to this place is for you to just understand the background things that are running. Yeah? That's for you to know what you are running. So any program, any application, database application that is running on a service, this is where you have all of them. So let's look at my SQL here. I think you should use the alphabetical. Order. Can you see Microsoft, Microsoft, Microsoft? We have it here. Can you see them? ASP.net. Can you see antivirus? Because you also have a database. Right? Can you see this? Laptop type auto. That is all this one that I have auto. Immediately you turn on your system. They come up automatically. Manual. You can also stop any of the service. Apache. Then, even 
use some database application like uh, look at my WAMP. Can I see WAMP? PHP. SQL. Can I see WAMP Apache? Yeah? Can I see it's giving me something like manual in front? Because I'm the one that started it up myself. When I want to use it, it's not on auto. And I can also stop it. And I can also restart it. Do you get it? So, the same way your Skype, do I even have Skype? It's like, maybe I don't have Skype on the system. Yeah? Yeah. I don't. I used to have it. Maybe I don't know. Have... So, if you have Skype, you need to come and stop the Skype. Or is it that you just right click and exit Skype from, from the icons here? Right? Because it might disturb you. Yes. When you close Skype, that doesn't mean it's that close. You need to stop the service. That's it. Uh, thank you. You sign out and you stop for, for the moment. Because it's most valuable. This is one of the serious no, errors. This one? No, all this one comes with operating systems. I'm just digging deep into operating system. Okay? Yeah. You have to know your system, but you don't know. Okay? So now, I want to get started. Where did the installation part of this? You can get the installation part of this on your local C. It depends on where you install it. Uh, WAM. Can you see WAM here? Right? Your computer, local C, WAM, uh, PIN. Okay? That's PHP, MySQL, Apache. Right? Then yeah, this is MySQL. This is the version. Okay? That's the version. Then yeah. inside here now you have what we call bin. So you enter this bin. Then yeah, you see MySQL. So this is the console that we want to target. It's inside here. Right? That will be writing our SQL statement. Okay? But instead of wasting all our time to locate this, it's very easy for us if you are using WAM. But if you are using SAMP, you need to locate it from the SAMP like this. Okay? I think I have to do that ready first. So, what I was saying, this is the location. So, we don't need to come to this place. This is what we need to do. If you are using ZAM, uh, ZAM, you locate it like that. If you are using well, just come to this place after you start up your service. So here now we have this. So this can you see my square? There you are console. Okay. So this is my square console. There's a way of setting passwords for this. For security reason, I've set password for mine. Right? But when you open yours, if you didn't have a password there, right? Just it's just open. Just like the way yours open there. Let me just enter my password, right? I'm going to teach you how to set the password. Start with Okay, so this is what you're supposed to have out with that password. Just if you were home. Right? So now you are inside my SQL environment. And this is a command from home. Okay? Uh, let me quickly go to this place. Database is a warehouse, right? Okay, where you keep store information. And information can be collections of tables. You get that? As far as I'm concerned, my own understanding of data is started from assets. Microsoft assets. Then okay. to US server, to MySQL, to uh, Oracle, there's all those also, uh, also DBAs, Fosco, way back. DBAs, yeah, yes. Yeah. If I should check some of my old archives, I should have DBAs there. Old one, yeah. Okay. Alright. So look at this now. This simply means you are on default MySQL environment. I'll be issuing what we call SQL statement. One by one now. Just take notes. Don't bother to write. I'll copy this and save it as a class note somewhere. I'll copy this 
I save it as class notes somewhere so that I can also go through it. Then when you begin to write SQL statement, you start with SQL. Okay? As a beginner, don't rush. Because once you made a mistake at a particular point, you can't come back. You need to write it again. Right? So don't rush. Make sure you go through before you terminate. You also use semicolon to terminate. Terminate. Yeah. Just like your JavaScript and some other things. Right? So if I want to know how many database that I have already running inside this application, I need to issue an SQL statement called show data basis. I see that. It's an English word. It's not one uh, Latin word for somewhere. Show data basis. Then I will terminate my statement with semicolon. Okay? That is, I want to query. Query is a question. Okay? This is a query. When we have query, query. SQL actually means structural query language. Structural query language. This is a query, a question. So these are ways of communicating with database. You only use a square to communicate with database. So we are communicating with database like that. Okay, well, give us all the database that exist inside this. Then I will press enter. And say, ah, 19 rows. That we have 19 database. Do you understand? That I have BYG market, class, class group, class work, election, event, inventory, MC apps. Can you see some different database that I have here? Right? Simaj, ports. This was uh, uh, ports. It's not just ports, it's purchase order tracker. So I don't have to short it. Okay? It's an application. Ports, skill up. Okay? Social trend. So by default, movement. That's the database for that site. Okay, All right. So look at this now. The BYG. This is database for BYG. Right. Okay. The event that uh, school leaders submit. This is the database. Okay. So now, by default. You have information on that schema. This is one of the other stuff that you might get to relate with in uh, Oracle. Oracle reverse table object as schema. So when you are reading, you are saying something like uh, schema. Okay? Just take your mind to table. Right? That's the rule not here. Right? By default, I, I believe you understand what I mean by default. By default, what we have here is information schema. Uh, my SQL, which one again? That's only two that you have by, by default. Every other one that you have, they are the one that created it. So if you check yours, that's what you have there. Okay? You understand? So this is to show database. So anytime you've already know the database that you have now, uh, before you work with any of these database, are you there? It's only two. It's only two. It's for visual schema and my square. It's for visual schema and text. Text. Can you see that? For visual schema and text. So that, those are the default database, right? And you don't work with default database. You create your own. Then the default username. Hello? The default username for the database is also root. R double O T. For my SQL database, the default is R-O-O-T. Okay? You can also decide that you don't want to work with default username. All these things are for security reason. Right? Okay? That's the default. Then even though you work with it offline, when you get online, you change it. You see as soon as offline is still your system. But you can even work with database offline without having a password. But it's in compulsory you to have a password online. There's no way you can do it. Just for security reason. Then, now, if I want to work with any of these databases, I need to tell this system that I want to work with one. What will I do? 
All I need to do is a use. Okay? Can I see? Use. Okay? The name of the database. Yes. So if I want to use VRM as a VRM, then I'll terminate it. I definitely want to make something so that you understand. Can I see this? Use VRM. The syntax is use the name of the database. Okay? And the name of the database this is this VRM. Which simply means, by default, it will always be inside my SQL. Do you understand? But I'm now saying that I don't want to work with this change to my SQL to this. I want to show you how this works on Visual when you get there. So it simply means, by now, I'm currently inside this. So if I want to know how many tables and the name of the tables that I have, Inside this particular VRM, what do I need to do? I would say show what tables, right? Tables. So I would say enter. So that is even between the database. The show database is just a singular. For this one, tables. Do you understand? Can you see what I have there? So, and this are, there's what we call table prefix, okay? Like someone's name, but something like surface and prefix, Mr. Mrs. So there's table prefix. Let's go to database like this. So the default, this is part of the security aspect, and I'm telling you. The default table prefix for WordPress is WP. Yes. Take note of this. But never ever work your database if you have to work with WordPress with the default table space uh, premise. So that's one of the security lapses. So if they say what we call, there's what we call SQL injection. I believe you understand what I mean by SQL. And I believe in SQL. Okay? SQL injection is a program that Akai use. Akai, you get of Akai. Okay? He's a professional person on the show. It's called Expo Akai. By okay. <laughs> All right. So you find out that some here now. Look at the name of the database, VRM. Right. See what I change the table previous to Niger. So if you send a SQL injection for anything WP, I will escape. Do you understand? I will escape. So these are the tables inside this. Then. Since you know the table now, if you want to know what is inside any of this table, for example, let me work with uh, table name, Niger underscore user, right? I guess I have to stop this. Okay? Do you know why I have to stop this? You don't know? Yeah. I will tell you now. Let me switch to database class. Okay? Do you understand? Use class. I have to stop it because this is also one of the security lapses. I don't know where this video will go to. And I'm working with a live data that is on. Do you understand? Do you get it? <laughs> so let me work with this class. I don't want to even enter. Just imagine as you enter here now, you see all the users, you see the admin, you see everything. So I can just go on and, you know, by the way, by the way. <laughs> right? So let's stop down for that one. So I might even try to go and do some other stuff for this. So class, so let's see what is inside class. Show tables. I think we know that one by now. So tables have only one. Class has only one table. And the name of the table is called Fedness. So if you want to know what's inside Fedness, so you can say, describe, what to know the properties of Fedness. That is called about the field that we have there. Your database table will always consist of what we call field. I think I have to explain this very well now. Base table always consists of what we call field. Are you there? I'll make the example. So you see, we have field. We have data type. We 
That's what we call size. Okay. And we also have attributes. So we have for, for, so let me just make an example of this. An example of this now, we can have ID. Okay? That's a field. A data type can be I'll be working with data type of uh, what we call this MySQL. Integer. Right? That's it. Then the size, the maximum is eleven. Yes, yeah, something like that. Maximum is 11. Then attribute can be can be something like not no. That is it cannot be empty. It cannot be empty. Then uh, we can have another one. Maybe username. Okay, this is where you'll be doing working with your database. So you can have something like Vaca. Okay. Data type can be 255, this is maximum of backup. Okay, 255. Then, you can have this. Not no. Okay. Not only that, it can also be unique. Not no is not going to be empty. Unique in such a way that two people cannot use it. One million people can use the same password, but two people cannot use the username. Can you see the way it is? These are examples of data types. These are the things that we'll be working with. Okay? This is ABC. Then uh, we can have something like uh, dates. This doesn't have data type. Date is dates. It doesn't have size, it doesn't have all this. And you can also have date and time. Okay? So maybe we have something like, uh, what the game? I'm just trying to think of. Mm -hmm. Huh? Mm -hmm. No, I don't want to use that, that card again. So I can have something like password. Can be just character. Okay? Character is more short in size. I can have this and the 32. It must not be empty. It doesn't need to be unique. One million people can use the same password. Then, maybe if, within what I'm saying, maybe I have something like uh, um, unit. I can use car. I use 20. Might not be known as well. Not known. Then we can have uh, what the units. I think it's correct. Or quantity, as the case may be. I'm just trying to apply so many things. Price. So I can have decimal. Okay. Then. Here. Decimal. Then here, eight comma two. Doesn't need any more or whatever. Then I can have amounts. Then I see I have decimal. Maybe nine comma two. And so on. And so on. And so on. So this is an example of the field name. Okay. The data type size and attributes okay these are examples of it so let's get started let's continue with what we have so you can see now we have this inside database class okay we have a table called threadnet i want to know uh, the properties of that particular thing, things that are involved so i can say disk is allowed you can say disk is allowed. You can say describe that's disk. Thread net. So it's telling me that inside thread net, I have a field name of ID. 
Are you there? And the ID is this. And the data, the size. Can you see? It's not. Okay? But I have a primary key. Okay? And the attribute of that primary key is auto increment. What is the meaning of auto increment? Auto increment simply means once I have one, I don't need to be put in two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh huh. So you know that auto increment. Then full name, this, and respectively. The same way I can have this. I just want to show that anyone you want. I can write fully described to work, both in Oracle and MySQL. Can you see that? See how it is? First one I have this. The second one I have described. Still work. So you can either use any one of the two. Describe uh, this. So you can either use any one of the two. So these are still just some of the introduction about the data type and that's so in the next class we're going to create our own uh, database and we're going to add a user to that our database. Okay? Thank you.